Greetings, my friends. You know, it's been a long time since I've shown you Deep Shine, and I thought I'd demonstrate it for you because it's my number one most requested product. Um, it's so exciting to me. I brought it out about five years ago, and since then I've improved the formula, so the bubbles have been eliminated. And it's so gratifying because of all the products I have, this is the most reordered thing that I carry. So it comes with these little cups, and you get some on your brush, okay? The brushes change all the time because I keep trying to find brushes that you like better, you know? So you can put it on things like this. And the reason I like it is because a lot of UV resins uh, either get little islands uh, where the uh, resin pulls away, and forms like little holes, or it sucks in away from the edges, kind of trying to dome. But since this isn't a doming resin, and I've had the viscosity adjusted to keep it from pooling or islanding, uh, it's really great for stuff like this that's curved, that you might want UV resin on, but it's awkward to do. So I just put this into a little piece of scrap clay and cure it in a UV light with a round object, same thing. Pop it in, go around, and it adds a lot. What I really like about this is it kind of magnifies the design. So when you're working with something really small and intricate, it shows it off for you. I'll show you that. This is kind of a good one for that. Once you get your shine on here, everything just looks a little bit more uh, clear. The odor is, I don't know, it kind of reminds me of a auto body shop. I don't mind the smell. Uh, it's a lot less uh, stinky than the old brand, the original formula. <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> uh, I also like it for textured objects because you figure this has got highs and lows. And if you were trying to pour UV resin on it, even in a controlled kind of way, it would go down in these crevices and it would go over the edge. But Deep Shine is got all the properties of a regular UV resin that you would pour on or cast with, but it doesn't have uh, that viscosity that causes it to run and drip and get high and low spaces. So here's another piece. This is some of my John Stuart Anderson cane, and I was very thrilled when he told me that he said his stuff had never looked that good. It's Fimo, and Fimo is not the easiest thing to uh, polish, you know, to buff out. So he said, you know, it's really a game changer. He's going to start using it himself in, uh, on his projects. So that's just a few examples of this. And this bowl, too, is Deep Shine. So it doesn't have to be small objects. You can get the look you want on curved surfaces. And I think it's a good thing. Thanks, everybody. Bye.